When I first turbocharged my Honda B, one of the biggest challenges was figuring out where to put the intercooler. The engine bay didn't have much room, running piping to the front of the car seemed pretty excessive, and honestly, I just thought mounting it in the back looked cool. To make it work, I removed the factory airbox and created a custom plate that bolts to the intake panel with a pipe welded in the middle. But here's the problem. The setup likely hurt performance more than it really helped. The piping had too many bends, and with the intercooler stuck in the back, there was barely any airflow to cool the charged air. And honestly, it probably doesn't even need an intercooler at all. So now I'm starting over. I'm designing a new intake plenum that mounts directly to the throttle body, and I'm building it using my 3D printer. To help me design things easier, I'm using the Einstar Vega to 3D scan the engine bay. Since it's wireless, I could get into tight spaces and scan all the features I need to make sure I design with the right dimensions and proper clearances. You can find the scanner and everything else you need for 3D scanning at 3dwonders.shop. You could check them out using the link in the description. After I got a good scan, I imported the mesh into Autodesk Fusion. Normally, I would align the mesh to the coordinate system before modeling, but since this is a relatively simple part, I'm going to go straight into modeling. I start off by making a three-point plane on the face of the throttle body, which I'll then use to start my 2D drawing. Then I trace out the mounting holes and other features from the throttle body, and then build out from there. I ended up designing a two-piece plenum. The first piece is a mounting flange that bolts to the throttle body, and then the plenum bolts onto that using M5 screws all around. If you want a more in-depth video of my modeling workflow, leave a comment down below. The filament I'm using is PPACF, which is a carbon fiber reinforced nylon. To double check that this is going to withstand the boost, I ran a quick simulation to make sure I don't blow anything up. 3D printed parts are anisotropic, which is one way of saying that the amount of force it can handle is different depending on the direction of the force. And another way of saying that would be the XY direction can handle more force than the Z direction. To account for this, I use the z-axis values for the tensile and yield strengths listed in the technical data sheet for the filament. With a wall thickness of 6 mm and a pressure set to 14 psi, the simulation shows the plenum to have a factor of safety of 15. Since I'm actually only running 7 psi on the car, this is way over designed. At this point, I can make the walls thinner and refine the shape to use less material, but I want to keep a higher margin of safety to account for any anomalies since this is a 3D printed plastic part. To print PPACF successfully, it takes a bit of prep, unlike PLA or PETG, where you can just load the filament and start printing. First, you need a hardened steel nozzle and an enclosed printer at a minimum. Nylon is hydroscopic, so it needs to be completely dry before printing. I picked up a cheap heater and let it run on full blast, which is like 60 Celsius, for 24 hours. The heater also has a port on the lid, so you can feed the filament to the printer and maintain dryness while printing. It's best to preheat the build chamber to maintain a uniform temperature throughout the printing process, and I did this by turning on the heat bed to 110 Celsius and let it sit like that for about an hour or so. Lastly, I spread a thin layer of glue on the build plate to make sure the first layer stays put during the whole process, and that is how I got a successful print. And if you don't feel like doing that, you can use a service like JLC CNC, who is the sponsor of this video. They offer a variety of services like 3D printing, CNC machining, and custom PCBs. You just need to upload your 3D file onto their platform, choose a manufacturing process, and select from a wide range of materials like plastic, nylon, or even metal for 3D printing, or aluminum, copper, or stainless for CNC machining. They even offer several finishes and special processing like anodizing and adding threads. Their prices are pretty reasonable and the whole process is super quick. I got this intake manifold CNC machine from 6061 aluminum and the fit and finish is exactly what I wanted and it arrived in just a couple weeks. So if the 3D printed version detonates, I'll have this one for backup and it'll probably outlast the car. You could check them out using the link in the description. Thanks again to JLC CNC for sponsoring this video. To bolt the plenum to the mounting flange, I'm using brass heat set inserts. I use a soldering iron that heats up the inserts, which then melt into the 3D print. The melted nylon then flows around the knurled exterior of the insert, creating a secure mechanical bond. To stay with the 3D printed theme, I designed and printed gaskets from TPU filament that are about 1mm thick with 100% infill, so it should be able to squish a little and seal up the mating surfaces.
and with all the pieces completed, I can mount it to the engine. To be honest, bolting the plenum to the mounting flange was kind of a pain, but it was doable. If this version fails, I'll have to redesign this part to make it easier to install. With the plenum mounted up, I welded up a new charge pipe and buttoned up all the ancillaries, so the final thing to do is take off the old intercooler and take it for a test drive. And although I was able to get it up to full boost, I noticed a ton of blow-by under load. These three-cylinder motors are notorious for having a lot of blow-by originally, but this was a bit more than I remember, so to keep it safe, I took it back to the garage to check it out. My initial suspicion was a piston ring issue, so I pulled the plugs to run a compression test. And it looks like I need a new valve cover gasket at the very least. I checked all three cylinders with a compression tester, and they all read 70 PSI across the board. So I'm thinking it might not be an internal issue, but I definitely need to diagnose it more to know what to do next. So unfortunately, testing the 3D printed intake plano will have to wait until I get this all sorted out. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and follow along by liking, subscribing, and sharing this video with your friends, neighbors, and grandchildren. Thanks for watching.